the farmer sitting on his porch and he sees a car roll up. A gangster steps out of the car. The farmer meets with the gangster by the pig pen. I can't do this anymore. What? This. What, mornings? No. All of this. You mean the deal? Afraid so. What do you mean? You, you need better pay? Different hours? No, nothing like that. I'm just... You know, done with this. Uh... Uh-huh. Okay. You wanna... Yeah, sure. The farmer helps the Here gangster get rid of some so, evidence uh, in the pig pen. You, uh... You're done, huh? Yep. You do understand what that means, right? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Mm, I don't think you do. I do. And you still think you can quit? Yeah, it's a free country. This isn't that kind of job. I know. But, uh... All the same. I am done. Nothing I can do to change your mind. I'm afraid not. Hmm. Well, let's go get some coffee. Talk things over. Come on. The farmer and the gangster walk into the farmer's house. Mm mm mm. Smells delicious as always. Ah, Sadie was the real cook. Hey, don't sell yourself short. Not much that's better than your home-cooked eggs. Hope you don't mind. I left out the bell peppers this time. Mm, can't stand them. Sadie always liked peppers, though, so well, I put up with them. Not to change the subject, but how long have we been doing this for, you think? Mm, Fifteen years, just about. Ah, Summer of 78. Why'd we meet? What was it? Needed the scratch. What did you need the scratch for again? Wasn't too popular with the folks back home. Had to make ends meet. And Bill needed surgery you couldn't afford. Yes. Well, here's what I remember. I had a problem that night, and Jimmy was trying to help me solve that problem when who should come in through that door but you? Well, I may have been a little tipsy. <laughs> I drove you home that night. As you're so fond of telling me. Uh, Jimmy knew we could help each other, so he called up Tony. We agreed. Made a deal. We all agreed. Ugh. Anyone ever tell you you're no good at making coffee? Sadie did. All the time. Thought you'd have got it better by now. Well, Sadie made the coffee. I made the bacon. It's good bacon. You know, when I was a kid, I thought pigs were all pink with curly tails. Yorkshires are. Mine are red waddle. American breed. Not a lot of them out there, you know. That's so? Mm-hmm. Always thought it'd be nice, you know, to raise pigs that was different. I had some Yorkies way back. Must have been, I don't know, before the service. Mm, long time ago. I'm an old man. <laughs> you and me both. So why the Waddles? <laughs> Funny name. Like I said, American breed. Nearly went extinct. Thought I'd do my part to keep them alive. And that tastes good. <laughs> you aren't wrong. You know, the other day I was reading the paper. Look at you, an intellectual. <sighs> it, maybe. Maybe. Anyways... I read that pigs were as smart as us. You believe that? I suppose so. How smart do you reckon? Smart than a dog. Think we could teach one to play fetch? Bill taught one, actually, back in 4-H. Called it, uh, Henry. What happened to Henry? Well, Bill had to learn how to butcher sometime. Hmm. We all do. Do you think the pigs know? Know what? That they're food. Oh, pigs don't think like that. How do you know? Because I know pigs. Pigs ain't like us. Well, sure, they're smart. They eat, they sleep, but they do not plan. They don't think about the future. And I suppose you do? Every man does. 
I think I'm just about finished up here. What do you say I, um... What do you say I accompany you today? How do you reckon? Well, my visits are always so short. Figured I could help you out with some chores. Maybe figure out what's going on with your little sports truck in the garage. As long as you're okay with shovel and manure first. What about your sidekick? Protégé. When I retire, he'll be the man you'll be dealing with. Good guy. Smart. Discreet. Mm, ambitious. Like you, I guess. But, uh, listen. I told you already. I'm quitting. We'll see. The farmer and the gangster walk towards a small shack. I've always wondered what was in this shack. Have you now? Figured it was just some old shack at first, but every time I asked what was in there, you haven't been forthcoming. I have not, no. Tried to take a look in the window once. <laughs> Did you now? Ta-da! <laughs> Beautiful, right? Pop machines. Here I figured you had a deep, dark secret. <laughs> we have a deep, dark secret. This here is one of my hobbies. What, collecting them? Well, sure, I collect them, I guess, but that's not really the point. Is there a point to any hobby? Well, it depends. What I meant was that it's no fun to just collect them. I, I fix them up. That's where the real fun is. Mm, makes sense. You, uh, you got any hobbies yourself? Mm, me? Well, well, who else am I talking to? <laughs> I mean, who doesn't have hobbies? Well, right? what's yours? Uh, reading, I guess. Reading isn't a hobby. Yeah, of course it's a hobby. What do you think libraries are for? Well, everyone reads. Heck, I read the paper every day. But reading isn't a part of your personality. It's just a thing people say they do when they don't have any other hobbies. You really believe that? Mm-hmm. I knew someone who read every single day. She said she loved the smell of books, the texture of the, of the pages on her fingers. She even bound books. Her hobby wasn't reading, it was books. You put too much thought into this. Well, a hobby is something you do because you're passionate about it. If it's something you're not wholly in love with, then you're still trying to figure out what your hobby is. So, you got a problem with my passion? Well, no, no, you said I guess. No one says I guess when they love something. Is love a requirement for a hobby? Absolutely. Love's a requirement for many things. Ah. Huh. And so you love fixing soda machines. Mm-hmm. That is correct. Why? It relaxes me. I just, I don't know, soda machines. It's an unusual thing for a man to want to fix. I mean, don't people get paid to fix them? It is unusual, but when the missus and I would get into fights or when things was bad or I was anxious, well, I, I don't know. Well, Sadie's sister, when she passed, told me that, uh, told me that it was all right to cry, that it wasn't weakness, that it was okay. And I remember sitting there in that empty living room with everyone murmuring and telling me how sorry they were. And I didn't feel like I needed to cry. Didn't you miss her? Of course I did, still do, but I don't know. Not everybody needs to cry. I don't need to cry. I don't get in that way, you know? Weakness? No. I don't know what she was talking about, weakness. Crying never felt weak to me. That's just not how I am. Hmm. I can't remember the last time I cried. Yeah, maybe that movie about the boy and his dogs? Oh, I always cry over that one. Dogs are good. Innocent. And when a dog dies, that always moves me to tears. Yeah. But Josie insisted. Then she kept insisting. Then... I don't know. I think she got offended I wouldn't cry as if she loved Sadie more than me. And she made me feel like I was I was something wrong. Hmm. Of course, that wasn't true. There wasn't nothing wrong with me. I just didn't... I, I didn't... I wasn't like that. It wasn't what I needed. It wasn't how I needed to grieve. This is how I grieve. This right here. When I got a problem, I fix it. And when I fix it, I fix a little part of me. And I don't know how or why, but it's healing. It's a healing thing, and that's why a man's got to have a hobby. Sorry, man. No. No, it's all right. I, I figured, you know. I figured if someone's got to know, 
This is my quiet little hobby. A thing I do to help me work out my worries. Well, yeah, looks like you fixed this one up real nice. <laughs> I'm proud of it. Proud of all of them. But I'm proud of this one most. Thank you for taking the time to show me. There's a... Uh, there's another reason I wanted to show this to you. Mm, what's that? If you want it, it's yours. <laughs> what am I going to do with a pop machine? Well, grab yourself a nice, refreshing drink of soda every so often, you big dummy. <laughs> Wait, I, 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 I couldn't possibly. Yeah. Please. Little memento of our time together. Oh, yeah, come on, Memento. Let's keep this train rolling. We can work something out. You come on back by, pick up the soda machine. Take it home with you. Or don't. If you really got no use for it, I won't be offended. I'll think it over. What's next? The farmer and the gangster walk towards a horse. Don't you own a tractor? What? Well, pigs I get. Goats too. Some fellas have chickens and cows. That's all well and good, but what's the point of a horse? Horses. They're God's most beautiful creatures. <laughs> what? You just keep a horse around because they're beautiful? Horses belong on farms. Uh-huh. Uh, you know you haven't got a saddle for them, so you don't ride them. There's no racehorse. Can't eat him. What's the point? I don't see the point in a farm without a horse. Gotta have a horse. Uh, and what's this about them being beautiful? Beautiful, really. Beautiful, he says. Spindly legs and bloated bellies and those weird, weird teeth. Sleep standing up. Who sleeps standing up? Something wrong with that. Aren't you going to say something? The farmer pats the horse. Shh. One day, one day maybe this feller will understand. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, to me, I mean. I keep apples here because he likes them. Likes the salt lick, too. Want to feed him one? Uh, nah, I'm good. The farmer feeds the horse an apple. Suit yourself. All right, here you go, boy. No, oh, no, I got to get going. Why don't you walk on out to pasture rest a spell? Oof. Horses give me the willies. Can't see why. After the horse, the farmers walk towards a small game of horseshoes. Why horseshoes? Well, why not horseshoes? Doesn't it feel... Well, look around you. My nearest neighbor lives so oh, half a mile down the road. It ain't the city. We don't have nightclubs and pool halls to go hang out at. Pool halls? What is this, 1890? This is 1992, friend. We got shopping malls for teenagers, restaurants, clubs, whatever. But pool halls? I don't even know if they had those when I was a kid. Uh-huh. Well, time doesn't pass out here as quickly, I suppose. No need for all that, uh, uh stimulation. Ah, so you play horseshoes. Mm-hmm. Or read a good book? Develop photos you took for yourself? Go fly fishing? Mm -hmm. It sounds idyllic. Quaint, but I do like. And you just want to give up this home cooked paradise? Hmm. Hmm. That's lonely, too. We could get you a nice place in the city. Ah, never was one for crowds. Thought you said you were lonely. I'd be just as lonely in a crowd. Sadie, she, uh. Nobody else could really see me. Understand what I was. How do you figure? I. I uh, after Saigon, when I got back, all these people were hugging their loved ones or protesting or whatever, and I don't know. I never felt more alone in all my life. I was home. I should have been happy, and, and I wasn't. Well, it wasn't a popular war. You lost friends too, right? Yeah, but uh, I got home, yeah. It was dark, and there was Sadie, waiting for me. Porch light like a halo around her head. And I knew I wasn't alone anymore. Hmm. 
So you came back to your high school sweetheart? Yeah. I, I thought I, I thought he'd have married her by then. I didn't think she'd wait for me. <laughs> Why not? You're a handsome guy. I bet all sorts wanted you, especially back then. Women love a man in uniform. You see that house on the hill? Uh, what, the burned out one? I always wondered what happened there. Gary Gordon, of the Gordon family. Went to high school with us. But, uh, well, most of us were farm folk. Sadie, her dad, was the county judge, so for us, that's pretty high society. The Gordons owned a lot of land, and all that passed to Gary after his ma died. In high school, he'd been our quarterback after his pop paid off the school, but ah, he wasn't a bad athlete. Good-looking guy? Oh, a real James Dean. And he had eyes for Sadie. That poor farm boy who couldn't play on the team versus the star quarterback? Shit, what kind of contest was that? Hey, who wouldn't want all this? <laughs> Man, yet, when I came home, there she was. Where was Gary? He served too? Ah, oh, Gary was too rich to serve. Star quarterback had some health exemption. Didn't get drafted. Uh-huh. Uh, so then, where was he? Running his dad's business. Trying to win her heart. <laughs> didn't work. Well, she invited him to the wedding. I didn't want him there, but, well, you know Sadie. Uh-huh. Well... The Gordons own most of the property around here, including the 200 acres surrounding that hill. Right. And he built a house. A house? W wait, that house? The very same. Looks like it was a mansion. It was. Why'd he build it? Uh, I don't know. To remind her what she'd given up, maybe. So, what happened to the wealthy Gary Gordon and his mansion? Well, he built it one year. Must have been 1966 or so, and... He went inside, and he just disappeared. Then one night, about a year later, there was a storm, and boom. No more Gary Gordon. No more Gary Gordon. Huh. Maybe he was lonely, too. Maybe. The farmer was distracted and loses Ooh. the game before she... <laughs> I won. <laughs> Guess this city slickers still got it. What's next? The farmer and the gangster walk to a small shack. You know, back home they call you the pig. That description is apt. And yet, you also have goats. I do also have goats. And a horse. And I had a dog. Tried cows once. Bill raised a neuter or something, but uh, when it died. Well, most people have, I don't know, chickens and cows. You got goats. Hmm. Is that uh, judgment I hear? <laughs> no judgment, no. Uh, just wondering. Why goats? Goat milk. Ah, there can't be much profit in that. Well, there's enough. Besides, I had you. Have. You still have. As I've said, I'm no longer interested in that particular revenue stream. We're the ones who sever ties. And you don't want us severing ties. I believe I made myself clear. You know... <laughs> I feel like we've had this conversation a couple of times now, and you still don't seem to get that I'm done with this line is just going to look really silly at the end of the day. You were asking me about goats. Yeah, goats. I don't like them. They like to play. They'll eat just about anything. The milk's an acquired taste, but I've always liked the cheese. Meat's good with the right curry. A friend taught me that a while back. So... You like them for the utility. I like them because they're playful. Want to get started? Hmm? Started? Milking. Oh, hey, really? <laughs> I've always wanted to try that. Well, here's your chance. My goats are smart. They know what's up, so they'll just walk up. Mm, here they are. Come on. Now they'll just take their positions here like they should. Got feed all ready for them. Just uh, you take a seat there. Uh, eh, not very comfortable. <laughs> I suppose not. Well, now that we're seated, all you gotta do is grab the teat with your thumb and forefinger. And pull? 
No, 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 don't pull. Just sort of rhythmically squeeze with the rest of your fingers. Gently pushing the milk out. Uh, like this? <laughs> Just like that, yes. All you gotta do is do that till the goat's out of milk. Huh. This is kind of nice. I found it relaxing. Well, I think I could get used to this. Mm, why don't you? Say what? Why not get used to this? Why, then come work with you? Sure. <laughs> yeah, some folks might take issue with that. Mm, can't make everybody happy. Better than ending up shop. The farmer squirts milk at the gangster. Hey, hey! <laughs> oh, gun down. Life over just like that. I usually get to shoot back. Well, we all wind up dead in the end, don't we? I'd rather live as long as possible. What good is that? Living? What good is living if you ain't happy? He says I'm not happy. Well, I'm not. You could be. I don't think I could. Well, that does it for the goats. Still uh, thinking about what I've been saying? I haven't stopped. Changed your mind? No. No, I have not. The farmer and the gangster walk toward the pile of manure. What's the wheelbarrow for? Hauling. Hauling what? Manure. Ah, and what are we supposed to do with this crap? We are going to fertilize. Well, not now, it's October, but we're going to put it in a nice big pile where it belongs. Uh, we? Well, you did say you wanted to help. Yeah, guess I did. So help. Pick up that shovel over there. We'll shovel it in, wheel it out, dump it, and we're good. And you do this every day? Mm-hmm. Most every day. And you want to keep doing this every day? It's my routine. Shoveling shit? Someone's got to do it. Hmm. That, uh, that isn't the first time you've told me that. Hmm. I remember. Vietnam. Yeah. You know, I did some digging on you. Personally, not the shit kind. Know what I found? Uh, I reckon you'll tell me. You went back. What happened that day in the valley? You saw the report. I'm not going to talk about it. Come on. No. Suit yourself. But you got a medal. You didn't have to go back. Had a wife and kid here. In a time where most of us were trying to figure out how to stay home. You went back. You going somewhere with this? Hmm. Think it'd be fun if you told me why? While we're shoveling shit? I was recall. You know that, I reckon. I was in the hospital, staring at the ceiling. Magazines next to me on the bed. And I... I had this, uh... Moment. A moment of clarity. A revelation. Uh-huh. And the revelation was this. Them protesters weren't doing a damn thing. The, the hippies and the, the bands weren't changing anything. You know who was? Uh, the Vietnamese? The Russians? No. No, the news. You hit someone hard enough day in, day out with the realities of war, pretty soon they'll tire of it. Vietnam, that was our first time that close to war. So, uh, I figured... Uh, you figured... You ain't the only one of us who's killed people. Why do you think I offered you that job back in 74? Turned it down for the same reason I went back. They were telling us our patriotic duty was to go and fight for our country. Well, that's what I did. You weren't recon when you went back, though. Went back with a camera. Talked them into letting me help with the press, keeping them safe and all that. So I did. And I took pictures. Took all the pictures I could. I fought in a different way. We pulled out a NAM, didn't we? Mm hmm. And now you're here. Great big war hero. Shuffling shit. Yeah. Shoveling shit. The farmer and the gangster rest under a giant tree. you know what this is? A uh, tree? <laughs> well, have you ever seen a tree like it? A, a tree's a tree. Remember all them roasted chestnuts at Christmas? Oh, sure, 
Sure. I mean, I kind of figured. Been by often enough to see the chestnuts myself. Why? Is it special to you? This is an American chestnut tree. Oh, hey, Saul. Hey, hey second he's gangster. Telling us about up to his them. American chestnut tree. American, huh? Thought they all died. What? <laughs> you remembered. Pays to remember things. Like the American chestnut. Hey, um, I, I, I'm a little lost here. Oh, a uh, couple weeks back, Saul came by, said you couldn't make it. Business as usual. Saw I had a bucket of chestnuts, asked if pigs could eat them, so we got to talking and I told him about chestnuts. Uh-huh. And what did you learn? Pork tastes better with chestnuts. And most American chestnuts have died off. It's true. Long before you or I was born, the American chestnut was prized for the quality of its wood. Jimmy'd like that. Oh, that he would, that he would. But this tree, there ain't many like it left. American chestnuts almost all died out because of the Asian fungus around 1900 or so. The chestnut blight. That's what, like a couple hundred thousand trees? Oh, billions. Four billion trees snuffed out practically overnight. The lumberjacks suddenly out of work in places like West Virginia. Those economies never recovered. Uh, I thought West Virginia was coal country. Logging, too, before it all died off. Now there's trees like the General here making nuts year-round. And I feed them to the Reds, and they grow nice and fat and tasty. Seems lonely. Well, it is lonely. Heartbreakingly lonely. To know everyone else you ever loved has passed on. So, I look after him, and he looks after me, and... I don't know. Sadie and I, we... We talked about being buried here, you know. Changed your mind? Yeah. Brody's grave was enough for me. But, uh, I don't know. I thought about having him moved. I don't, uh, I don't know. You've got plenty of years left in you yet. So, what's the moral of the story? With the, the trees, I mean. Be wary of outsiders. Heck no. There are trees out there that are blight resistant. Maybe even the general here, but I'm too afraid to find out. With enough time and horticultural understanding, we could have done something. Preserved all these trees? Maybe we could have. They are magnificent. It's just... It's just a... I don't know. I wasn't trying to teach you a lesson or anything. I just... But you did make a point of it. I did do that. I just, it's a part of me is all. And God willing to live for a hundred more years. I'm, I don't know. I see myself as a custodian of sorts. And one day I'm, I just. So I'll go ahead and wait for me at the van. Hmm? Hey. Hey. Look at me. You're thinking about dying. Thinking you can pass this responsibility off to someone else. You don't have to do this. Give the tree another decade of your time. Well, the time of my demise aside, someone ought to know about the tree. Jimmy'd love to know about this. Oh, Jimmy would cut it down. <laughs> he would. Please. Don't tell him. Hey, I'm good at keeping secrets, but Jimmy's Jimmy. Please, let me rest here. And if there's a way, a way to, oh, I don't know. Okay, okay. Hey, you got more to show me, right? The garage, huh? No tour would be complete without the garage. I have to ask, why a sports truck? I think they're called coupe utility, but, uh, you mean why not a sports car? Yeah, I mean, I always figured you'd have a midlife crisis like the rest of us. Sports car, motorcycle, an affair, something like that. Couldn't really say why I love these so much. 
Saw mine one day, fell in love. With that? Mm-hmm. Had to bring her home with me. I'll admit, it has a charm to it. But she won't run. No? Well, pop the hood. Let's take a look. You're serious? Sure. Already had my midlife crisis. <laughs> Motorcycle? Sports car. And these puppies, well, you know, they're similar enough. Some of them even use the same engine. We can figure this out. All right. Now, let's see here. Can you get me that drop light? My eyes aren't what they were. Sure thing. Thank you. Saul's a good kid. Hmm? What's that? Saul was a good kid. I like him. It was nice him coming by. Yeah? That's good to hear. Never met anyone with so much promise. Never? In my entire life. Saul's dad was a good man. Didn't think his kid had it. As a boy, he was too soft. But then he got older, graduated college, really came into his own. Eager. More capable than he knows. Hmm. Great listener. Can you believe we were his age once? <laughs> Hard to admit. When I was young, I thought I knew everything. Yeah? And now? Today, I learned from you and him about chestnuts. Well, I learn something new every day, I suppose. You check the spark plugs? Mm, give me a second. Uh, what about your boy? Bill? Oh, he's fine, I guess. <laughs> you guess? Yeah, how old is he again? Born in 60, so, uh, 32 as of September. Huh. Roy would have been about his age. Yeah? Yeah. Well, uh, what's this about you and Bill? Oh, he don't want to talk to me no more. What? Bill? Toe-headed little guy? Always friendly and outgoing? That Bill? It's, uh, it's about Sadie. Ah. Yeah. Hey, mind if I ask you a completely unrelated question? Hmm? What's with the airplanes at your neighbor's place? Oh, Chuck's farm. Chuck? Huh. Yeah, what's with all the planes? There's no runway around here. Uh, you know how farmers are. Hey, have you checked the air filter? Yeah. And, yeah, I know how you are. You got plenty of junk, too. But I've never seen anyone else with, uh, uh, what are they, World War II bombers or something? I think he has a B-36. No kidding. You got no idea what a B-36 is, have you? Yeah, have the foggiest. Well, a B-36 is a big old bomber made out of magnesium. Biggest America ever had. Took two train tankers to fill one up. And you could fly from Monday to Thursday without refueling. So why does Chuck have one in his backyard, plus all the others? I asked him about that once. Hmm. Okay. Wire's loose here. Where? Right there. So, what'd he say? Oh, uh... <laughs> dead navigator came to him in a dream. <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. Dead navigator from the Korean War came to him in a dream, said the planes were in danger of being lost, and it was up to Chuck to save them. So, Chuck's crazy. <laughs> Well, eccentric, maybe, but, uh, yeah. Do you believe in ghosts? If I did, I'd have a different job. Why, do you? Well, I figure we all move on in some way. Energy is neither created nor lost and all that. So you're saying a dead navigator came to a farmer in the middle of nowhere, no offense, and told him that it was his job to preserve airplanes? Yep. So, now there's a bunch of planes on a crazy coot's farm. And he keeps them safe. Can you think of a better place for him to be? Hmm. No. Want to try running it? Sure. All right. Oh, come on. Turn over, you son of a bitch. Looks like she'll give you a few more years yet. Uh -huh. Yeah. Remember Slick? Sure. He always wanted one of these. Where is he now? Fighting Saddam. Jimmy tried to find out. Classified, I heard. Good kid. Angry. Well, maybe when he gets back. Uh, Thinking of giving him the car as, what, thanks for his service? 
I never wanted to be thanked for lying, but that boy's seen more hurt than any of us. Deserves better than that old Pinto of his. <laughs> yeah. Well, where to then? The farmer and the gangster go to a range behind the bar to shoot a shotgun. Shotguns, huh? I always like shotguns. Liked? Still do. I like revolvers myself. When it's for sport. Got a few of those. Oh yeah? What's your favorite? Them big slab-sided ones. They have a... a charisma. What about you? Ah, uh, nothing special, really. 357's when I can. But this is a shotgun. Yep. Figured we could shoot some skeet. Always like shooting skeet. Taught Bill to shoot this way. Hm. You're a good father. Could have been better. Psh. Name a father that couldn't. So, how do we do this? Uh, who's going first? You can go first. All right, then. Hm. This is more my speed. Hanging out, shooting guns. Maybe a few beers next time. I'm not sure guns and beers mix, friend. Oh, sure they do. Like peanut butter and very dangerous chocolate. Next time. Trust me, next time. And there isn't going to be a next time. Oh, there's always a next time. This is it. After today, we are done. I tried to tell you. I keep trying to tell you. There is no out. There is no done. You keep doing this. You never do anything again. It's permanent. Kaput. Then it's kaput. You don't mean it. If that's the way it's gotta be. You have a choice. You haven't listened to a word I've said. I've been listening. I've been listening all morning. I've been listening to you talk about being sad and lonely and refusing to listen to reason. I have my reasons. Your reasons aren't any good. But they're mine. Walk me to my car. The farmer and the gangster talk in front of the gangster's car. So, this is it then. It is. Why? Why are you doing this? Because I need to. <laughs> We're friends, goddammit. You don't get to get all stoic on me. I know losing her was hard, but there's gotta be something. Gotta be. I can't take care of the farm like I used to. And there isn't much point anymore. So sell the farm. Move into the city. Meet someone new. Do you believe in hell? What? Do you believe in hell? I'm not scared of hell, if that's what you mean. I didn't ask if you were scared. I asked if you believe. I don't know. Well, I do. And I think... <laughs> I think doing this. I think that's where I'm headed. And why? You think you can buy your way into heaven? I can't take back what I've done. What I can do is do something right. Why? Because I want to see her again. That's all. I just want to see her again. And I figure. I'll do one right thing with my life, just one thing. Maybe I'll get to see her again. One more time. And this is your one right thing? It is. How do you know? How do you know if any of this is true? I don't know. But I got the notion, and the notion's got me. least I can do is uh, tell you adios. Just like that. What else is there to say? Not much, I guess. No. All right, then. Have it your way. I'll be back this evening. You get an afternoon. Do whatever you gotta do. Just, uh, 
You have the door unlocked. I can do that. Adios, friendo. Be seeing ya. The farmer revisits his horse. Alrighty. Come on now. Come on now. That's a good boy. Brung you an apple. Granny Smith. Just like you like. Good boy. Good boy. You've been real good to me. You know that? Mm-hmm. Brought me a lot of good luck. Good times. Without you, I don't, uh, yeah, I do not know. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for all you done. Gonna go ahead and leave the barn door open behind me when I go. When you want to leave, you go find someone else. I figure I'll just, uh, I'll leave you to it. The farmer does a little bit of fishing and then goes back home to make some phone calls. Come on. <laughs> Ooh, nice catch. The farmer calls his neighbor. Edie, listen, uh, I don't mean to interrupt, it's just, uh, uh, I'm on a tight schedule, and uh, uh, I need you to do me a favor. A favor? Sure. What you need? Uh, I'm going to be out of town for a few days. Oh? Finally taking my advice and visiting family? I was uh, wondering if you and Garth could make sure the animals were fed and watered, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, sure, sure. We ain't got much going on. Thanks, Edie. Listen, uh, I, uh, uh... Evan! Evan! What are you doing? Get down from there! Sorry. Cats. <laughs> anyway, what were you saying? Yeah, yeah, the animals. Uh, I got them fed and watered for today. They should be good for tomorrow, too. B but if it's too much of an imposition... Not at all. Not at all. We're happy to be imposed upon. You've been a good neighbor for so long. I'm glad you called me today. Thank you, Edie. Hey, you should drop on by next Saturday afternoon. We're going out to the Harvest Festival with the grandkids, and I know how lonely it's been, what with Sadie gone and all. You should come with us. Oh, I appreciate the thought, Edie. I don't think I'll be back in town by then, though. Sorry. Oh, that's too bad. It's been real nice seeing you coming back to church again. Oh, it's, uh... It's been real nice being... Welcome back. But now I gotta go. You know, chores and such. You know how it is. Oh, I sure do. Well, come on over sometime. Just got some gooseberries in. We're making pies, and we'd love to have you. I know they're your favorite. <laughs> that they are. Gotta go now. See ya. The farmer calls his son. Bill, I, well, now how'd you know it was me? Caller ID. I, I don't know what that is. It's new. Tells me who's calling. Huh, that's, uh, that's some real fancy stuff you got there. Uh-huh. Listen, I'm busy. Why are you calling? Oh, uh, just, uh, hadn't talked in a while. And whose fault is that? I... Can't we just... can't we talk? What is there to say? Hi, son. How are the grandkids? Well, how are they? Oh, by the way, I put your mom in a rest home so I could stay there and take care of my goats and my pigs 
and my stupid horse. Because, God forbid, I actually look after my sick wife. That's not fair. You put her in a home. You decided she wasn't good enough for you, and you put her in a home. I, no, I, I didn't know what to do. The doctors there, they would. How hard could it be? Alzheimer's isn't some terrifying boogeyman. It wasn't it you who told me to stay with the ones you love, no matter what? So, what? You didn't love her anymore? Don't you dare. You gave her up. You gave her up to doctors and nurses. You know what they do to people in homes? It was the best home money could buy. Money. You and your damn money. Cared more about being a rich pig farmer than the people you were supposed to love. Hey. I loved you both. I did everything for you. Everything. Yeah, right. Bill. I, I, I didn't want this call to... You wanted to put my mom in a home. So I'm not sure what you want matters. B B Bill. Bill, I just, I just called to say... Say what? Sorry? Did you know I visited her? I found out where you put her, and I visited her. Ah. Uh, they said you visited sometimes. She was my wife, Bill. She cried, Dad. She cried. She wept, and she sobbed, and she kept asking me where you were. She was so scared, Dad. She was so scared. She wanted you to take her home. The doctor said sometimes she was lucid, but I couldn't. She was lucid, Dad. And I held her hand as she sobbed herself to sleep. And I kept holding her hand until they told me I had to go. Where were you? Taking care of your precious chestnuts? Feeding your heritage breed pigs? No, 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 Bill, Bill, I... Save it. Talk to your goats or your pigs or whatever it is you do. I just wanted to tell you goodbye, Bill. I, I've got some of your stuff all boxed up. If you wouldn't mind coming by in a few days to pick it up. We'll see. Goodbye, son. You'll never make this right, Dad. <sighs> I'm still trying. The farmer goes to his backyard and visits his dog's grave. Hey, you Brody. How you been? I know I don't drop by as much as I ought. I ain't got an excuse. We had some good times, Brody. I remember Doug coming over, remarking on your coat. Said you didn't need no training. He'd put you with his bird dogs and you'd figure out what to do. Well, he was right. You came a waddling over out of that lake, duck in your mouth, proud as everything. You wouldn't give that duck up. But you got the hang of it. Uh, uh, Doug and I, we had a falling out. Haven't spoken to him since. Well, he passed, so no point reminiscing, I guess. The farmer pats the dog's grave. Good boy. Good boy. You want to know something, Brody? I always... I always believe dogs go to heaven, because all dogs is fundamentally good. Now, even the mean ones, they're good, too. They're just, you know, hurt or starving or, you know, sick or scared. So, uh... I know where you are. And I know Sadie's probably with you right now. I done wrong, Brody. I done a lot of wrong. And I don't know if I can make up for it. I want to tell you I'll see you soon, but... The truth is, I do not know. I don't know if I was good enough for you. Or her. I don't know if I did my best. So, uh... This may be goodbye. I'm... I love you. And I miss you all the same. The farmer grabs a shotgun and places it by the dinner table. He cooks a meal and goes to sit by the shotgun at the dinner table.
After some time, the farmer hears somebody arrive and people are talking outside of his house. The gangster from this morning comes into the house and names a gun at the farmer. Thank you guys for listening to the recording of this game. I'm going to let the credits play out. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Good morning, good afternoon, or good night.